So thank you, uh, the DIS, for the invitation. And um, I'd like to start by acknowledging and thanking all the people living with HIV who have contributed with data for the study. And I have no conflicts of interest to declare. So uh, a little bit on the scenario of the HIV epidemic in Brazil. So in 2017, we had around 867,000 people living with HIV, of whom 65% were males, and around 548,000 were on ART, corresponding to 63% uh, of the total PLHIV. Um, it's important to know that ARVs are distributed in Brazil by the public health system free of charge since 1996. And uh, regarding our adult treatment guidelines, so in December 2013, Brazil implemented a, the, the treatment for all strategy, meaning the recommendation to initiate ART in all people living with HIV, regardless of CD4 count or clinical stage. And the first line, uh, the preferred first line treatment recommended then for adults was lamivudine tenofovir efebrance to TLE. And in early 2017, these guidelines were uh, changed and dolutegravir replaced efebrance in the first line treatment. So the objective of our study was to compare the observed effective effectiveness of different regimens in the initial response to ART in adults in Brazil from 2014 to 2017 using real-world programmatic data from the Brazilian Ministry of Health. So uh, on the databases that were used for the study, firstly the ARV dispensation system. So in Brazil there are no private uh, there are no ARV sales in private establishments, so this system captures virtually everyone on ART in the country. The database registers the, the regimens dispensed with their durations, with, which can be from 30 to 180 days, but are most often for 30 days. The drugs and the formulations. Uh, the HIV lab, laboratory exam system, so it captures CD4 and viral load exams performed within the public laboratories, those which are paid by the public health system. So it does not capture information on people with private health care insurance, which um, is around 25% of the population. And these two systems, they share a common registration database with a single unique identifier, which gathers personal information on the patients. So our outcome was the six-month virological suppression, uh, measured by the viral load count around 180 days using a threshold of 50 copies. For our statistical analysis, we used univariable and multivariable logistic regression models. And our inclusion criteria was age 15 years or older, having started ART from January 2014 to June 2017, and having information on the six-month viral load count. And we excluded patients who had an undetectable baseline viral load count due to uncertainty as to whether they were indeed ART naive. So our independent variables, our main independent variable then was the ART regimen. Uh, so we listed uh, all regimens with at least 1% frequency, which were six regimens, and grouped the rest into others. And we controlled for sex, age, baseline, CD4, and viral load counts, and adherence, which was based on pharmacy refill data calculated as a percentage based on the dates and the durations of the dispensations uh, registered into the ARV system. So uh, 105,533 people living with HIV met the inclusion criteria. 2.2% were excluded because they had a, an undetectable baseline viral load, resulting in 103,240 individuals included in the analysis. So our overall six-month virological suppression was 76.9%. 67.6% uh, 67 of our cohort were males. Median age was 34, median CD4 was 394 cells, median uh, logarithm of the viral load was 4.58 copies, and median adherence was 96.2%. Um, so the results now regarding the control variables, uh, adjusted odds ratios were higher for females, for older patients, for patients with higher CD4 counts and lower viral load counts, and with higher adherence. So um, now regarding the main, ver main stu study variable, uh, the RT regimen. So um, virological suppression ranged from 63.7 to 85.2%. And in the, in the adjusted analysis, we set uh, TLE as the reference, since it was the, the regimen recommended as, as preferred 
first line for most of the study period, and it contains 74% of our patients. So uh, TLD, which replaced TLE uh, in early 2017 uh, as first choice, presented 42% higher odds of virological suppression than our reference. The regimen with uh, zidovudine, lamivudine, zidovudine, and efebrance, uh was similar to our reference. And regarding the PIs, uh, the regimen with boosted etazanavir was 33% inferior to our reference. And the regimens with lopinavir, boosted lopinavir, were 41 and 46% inferior. 41% the one with zidovudine and 46% the one with tenofovir. So uh, now let's briefly go through some of the limitations of our study. Firstly, the adherence was measured from pharmacy refilled data, so accuracy may have been less than ideal. But this method has been previously validated using the same ARV database, and adherence was highly predictive of virological suppression. And we did um, several analyses with both uh, continuous and different categorizations for adherence, and results were very similar. Also important variables were not available or not consistently reported, such as clinical stage, pregnancy, or co-infections. And uh, most importantly, indication bias was uh, likely present, since some regimens are recommended or counterindicated in specific situations, such as pregnancy, tuberculosis, co-infection, or, com or other com comorbidities. So for example, uh, lamivudine, zidovudine, and bucilopinavir was uh, recommended for pregnant women until 2014. But regarding um, our most important result, I'd say, so the comparison between the, the two first-line regimens, uh, we believe indication bias does not seem to have interfered. We had two reasons for concern. One was that in the current guidelines, the, the 2017 guidelines, TLE is still first choice for non-severe cases of TB co-infection. And in 2015 and 16, it was first choice for pregnant women. So what we did was we tested models excluding these patients, so female patients uh, in 2015 and 16, or all patients on, on TLE in 2017, and results were very, very similar. So to conclude, then, the observed effectiveness of TLD in our cohort was markedly superior to other regimens after controlling for age, sex, adherence, and baseline CD4 and viral load counts. It was 42% superior to TLE and 51 to 162% superior to other regimens. So our results then, we consider that they support the decision made by the Ministry of Health to switch its recommendations for preferred first-line ART from efavirenz to dolutegravir. Thank you.